grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that we consider for our meditation on the Stewardship Sunday is found for us in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 3 through 9. While he, meaning Jesus, was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of a man known as Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them at any time you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the gospel is preached, Throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. This is the word of our Lord. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, dear friends. A rich man wanted to give his mother a birthday gift that would top all others. He read about a a bird that had a vocabulary of 4,000 words, spoke several languages, and could even sing three arias from operas. He immediately bought the bird for $50,000 and had it delivered to his mother. The next day, he he checked on it to see if his gift had arrived, and So he asked his mother, what did you think of the bird? And she replied, it was delicious. What a waste, huh? But I'm sure that you can relate. You and I have no doubt made purchases that we later deem a waste. A waste because the purchase we made didn't do exactly what we wanted it to do, or it wasn't exactly what we had in mind when we thought about it to begin with. It was a waste because it didn't see any use. We do that and can do that in potentially anything we purchase, right? On the expense of things, a house or a car, maybe spending beyond our means or on smaller purchases, electronics, or even food, perhaps, sometimes. But let's make one thing clear. There is one thing that you spend your money on that is never a waste. And that's when you spend your money on Jesus. Today we want to focus on that fact that your offerings are never a waste. Let's set the scene here. We're in Bethany. Bethany is on the Mount of Olives just outside of a short distance from Jerusalem where Jesus had been invited to supper at a man's house by the name of Simon the leper. Now this is the only time we hear about this man named Simon the leper, but we can perhaps understand a couple things about him perhaps. Since he was mixing with the general population at this time, he was probably healed of his leprosy at this point. And if he had been healed of his leprosy, there's perhaps a good chance that it was Jesus who had done it. This perhaps was some kind of a thank you meal for Jesus for that act of kindness. But the highlight of this dinner wasn't focused at all on Simon. 
Rather, it was focused on the act of a woman, an extraordinary act. And John's recording of this occasion tells us this, that this woman who had this extraordinary act was actually Mary, who was Martha and Lazarus's sister. Understand what Mary did. She anointed Jesus' head and Jesus' feet, also John says. That was somewhat of a common practice to do that for guests, but normally it was only a couple drops at a time. Mary's anointing was different. She anointed Jesus with an entire jar of per- perfume, expensive perfume that came from the likes of India, pure nard, a pint, we're told, in fact, in, in John's book as well. Worth a year's wages. Think of that in today's terms. How much is in a year's wages? Well, it depends on who you are, certainly, but 30,000, 40, 50, 60, more? That's a big price tag for this gift, isn't it? What does the sinful nature say? Was that the right thing to do? Couldn't she have spent that money better? Couldn't she have been a better steward of, of that gift than just simply wasting it all in, in one act? The sinful nature is echoed in, in those who were witnessing Mary's act of kindness. They said, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. John's Gospel tells us who was actually leading the charge here. It was Judas who was leading the charge, and not surprisingly either, because Judas, not only was he a known thief as the treasurer of the disciples' money, but Judas was also had a heart that was already astray from, from Jesus and was already in the works of plotting against Jesus to betray him. But what's interesting is Judas wasn't alone in this clamoring. Some of the other disciples agreed that it was a waste. Well, was it? Tens of thousands of dollars that lasted really only mere moments? Couldn't this have been put to better use? Think about how many meals or groceries could have been bought for the poor or homeless with all that money. Logically, that's what might make some sense. But it goes beyond logic here. It goes and speaks to the matter of the heart. Jesus exposed that as he defended Mary. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them at any time you want, but you will not always have me. Mary had certainly heard Jesus talk about the fact that he was going to die, that he wouldn't always be with them. Would this be the last time that Mary saw Jesus? She didn't know. And if so, she wanted to make the most of it. She wanted to give Jesus her best while she had the chance. Giving to Jesus for Mary was a priority. Giving to the poor was certainly important, but they would always be around, as Jesus said. Giving to Jesus at this point was of much greater importance. He would soon be gone. That reminds us, really, of some of the basic principles of stewardship, too, doesn't it? First of all, giving back gifts to God that he gave to us in the first place needs to be our top priority. Think about why we give. 
Why did Mary give this incredible gift? No doubt she was giving out of thankfulness to Jesus, who she was friends with, for one. She and her family were good friends. But what else had Jesus done for her? Raised her brother from the dead. Jesus had also diligently taught them and no doubt, and no doubt had taught them about salvation. There was great reason for Mary to respond out of thankfulness. And that's precisely why we give too, out of thankfulness for the incredible things our Lord has done for us. He has given us everything. Everything that we have and are. That leads to another principle that we are to give of our first fruits. It's hard to argue that Mary didn't give of her first fruits, isn't it? After all, she gave pretty lavishly, wouldn't you say? Let's give Jesus our best, too. Let's do that and remind ourselves in our own budgeting, in our own lives of, of priorities in our budgeting and so on, in reminding ourselves not to spend our money on all the other necessities of life and then whatever's left over I'm going to give to Jesus. Now let's turn that around. Let's give to Jesus first and then work with the rest that we have been given for the rest of the needs, necessities, and even luxuries that we may have left. In fact, let's keep in mind the real reason, the very heart of why we as Christians give that Mary, that was really explained in Mary's generous offering. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. It wasn't really more than a week later from this incident that Jesus would be buried, that he would suffer and die and then ultimately be buried. Mary didn't necessarily know the timing, but she did certainly know that Jesus had talked so frequently about his impending death, and she knew it was for her sins. She understood that fact. The fact that Jesus did this ultimate act for you and for me, for our sins, should move us also to generously give back. We also know that he was buried, only to rise again so that he would prepare a place for you and me in heaven. What more motivation do we have to give generously to our Savior who gave up everything? so that, in turn, we could have everything. And generous giving speaks volumes in and of itself. Listen again to Jesus. I tell you the truth. Wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Pretty true words, huh? We're half a world away, 2,000 years later, virtually, and we're talking about this very act. Doesn't that ring true also for those who have gone before us, who give, have given generously? Take this church, for instance. The founders of this church have, have given generously in order to to build this beautiful structure with its beautiful windows, beautiful pipe organ. And for what purpose? To speak the beautiful gospel that speaks volumes. Now it's our turn. It's our turn to examine our own giving are we ever in danger of thinking that giving to church is a, a waste? That maybe money isn't always going exactly where we think it should be going? That maybe it's, it's going in places where 
we might deem a waste for some particular reason, well, that's where trust comes into play too, doesn't it? Trusting in in leadership who has been charged with coming up with a budget which the congregation approves and which the leadership then executes to the best of their ability based on the gifts that come in. And so it's up to each and every one of us to generously give, trusting that the Lord's work will get done. Why do we give? We give because Jesus gave his life for us. We give so that the message of the gospel will be told for generations yet down the line. We give knowing that our offerings are never a waste. Amen.